Hey guys, I am working on a new project. Now I've got my Harbor Freight trailer back in the shop because we're, re we're attaching all the boards to it. And you can get an idea, the uh, world's first Harbor Freight double axle. I've had people say, well, I've made one. Well, show me a picture. I'd be great to see it. Um, this one right here is, is one of them that I built in here in the shop. And you can look at some of my previous videos. And it is, uh, it's not very big, as you can see by my border collie on it. And that engine and other things um, what we're working with today is I've got a huge now you see all these parts here so I want you to stay with this and I'm gonna make this in a few parts of videos but you look in here I've got this huge battery bank in here in a very very big tall batteries um, and back here of course I've got another battery bank back here that is back in this room back here so a lot of batteries a lot of a lot of power so uh my problem is is that uh, last winter i had to run this big generator three times and then i had to run the generator and i plugged this in so you can see what i'm talking about and i actually use a larger charger but i had to run the generator to produce 120 volts and then convert it to charging voltage and and it just burned a massive amount of gas or propane in this case that's a dual fuel so and big 9000 watt but it burns a lot of fuel to do that and to bank my batteries back up when we had a foot of snow which is rough on anybody with solar panels and even though i have wind turbines they did good but they did not prevent low voltage conditions so we have to deal with that now what I've got here, and this is video one of, of a couple of videos. Uh, so what I have here is a whole bunch of different parts. I have a rectifier, terminals, cooling fans, relays, a switch, very large terminals, because what I'm working with puts out a lot of power. And I'll put you a link down there. You can go directly to his store and, and, and see all the information because I mean, I could, I could fill up the whole block down there below the video, below the ads, below everything, look down there where the upload is, and you'll see a link to what this is. Now, sitting here underneath my Missouri pig sticker is something that comes from a company called Thermodyne Systems. They're out of California. There's a direct phone number for it. And it, they create and have sold a PMA that is currently up on two of my wind turbines have been running for four years without even putting a wrench on them. I haven't had to touch them. Um, they've been just bulletproof. So the reason that I am sticking with this brand is I've had numerous different brands and you can go back and look in my videos. Um, I, I recommend that you can see a lot of where this is all coming from. And this taped up extremely well. Um, is a PMA and a controller that is inside here. So I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible. And I can pack, well, pretty heavy. There we go. And more packing. And in here is the controller, packed very well. So I might have to pause to open some of this stuff up. And he sends you some extremely good paperwork. I mean, you gotta be pretty dumb not to understand how to operate this thing. So here we go here, and these electronics will be going in this box here so that they're away from bugs and insects and anything else because this whole setup is going to be put outdoors. I mean, not out in the, in the middle of a field, but it's going to be put outside my building. It'll be well protected, and I'll build a nice enclosure for it. And using circulator fans, make sure it stays cool, pulling the air away from this PMA in here, permanent magnet alternator. Now, it does look like a standard General Motors alternator, but that's where it all stops. The guy here that makes these is a freaking genius because he come up with a design that uses these slanted magnets. And these are really serious magnets. I'm going to give you this now. Do not take this apart expecting not to have those magnets grab something and put your hand in between them and hurt you. It's very dangerous messing with this if you try to take it apart. I don't recommend it. You can replace the bearings in here and you can go to his videos, uh, Wind Engineering, 
I, you'll look for a link. I might put, I'll put it in my post or see if I can get him to post on this video so you'll know where to go and you'll get more details about this thing. Now, it uses the bulletproof, been around forever, Delco 10 and 12 SI case and bearings and everything else. And if you look at this thing, it has these slanted magnets in it. Now every one of these is one of these really huge magnets that's really deep going down the side here so that the whole core, which is the center of this rotor right here, that's the rotor, the whole thing is fully magnetized with north-south points all the way around it. Number seven of one, seven of the other, every other one. Inside of here is this massive heavy winding. I'm gonna show you this, let me grab one. All right, now, sitting in here is this thing. This is the stator, and this thing here is just a freaking powerhouse. I want you to look what size the, uh, the windings are. Take them in a comparison to that knife. Look at the gauge of that stuff. This is just radical. And that Thermodyne PMA, Permanent Magnet Alternator, is radical. So you're looking at three wire output, goes from here, into the rectifier it's going to go through this into the rectifier come from the rectifier as dc voltage we will be using a thermal switch on the rectifier to run the fan so the fan will kick on and off based on this thermal switch and pull air through and of course we will ventilate the box so that it'll pull air through now the other thing we have is on the front of this is going to be mounted this fan i'll pause and we'll get that showed to you Okay, now after pausing to get that removed, get the nut and everything removed, what I have is I have the spacer. Now you'll have to request this from this guy here at Thermodyne Systems. So you'll see that, Thermodyne Systems. And you'll have to request that you get the fan spacer. Now the fans, you can buy them from him, but I have a preference for this model here. It's a little bit better for my purpose, but yours might be a little different. So what I've got is I have the fan here. It will mount on, and then we have this larger pulley because this PMA is made for a wind turbine. This PMA is a super core. So I'm getting it dirty on my table here. So it is a SC12, which means it's for 12 volt. It'll produce about 40 volts open voltage, but once you do the rectifier and everything else, it runs about 30 volts. Um, your batteries are made to keep it down, so it's made for a 12 volt system. And it is a uh, original Hornet power systems. Uh, he's practically the guy that, that designed the whole thing here. Uh, they've been around forever, this Thermodyne guy. And um, if you look over here where it says Super Core SC, there's a PC for Power Core, and there's a SC for Super Core. This one here is, in my view, the best. So you might find different ones, you might want different ones, but this will be mounted like so. This fan, or this big pulley, will be re-drilled to 17 millimeter, because that's the size of this shaft, and it will be re-drilled and bolted so that I have a large seven inch pulley on the front or on the PMA. And then over here on this engine, I will have a two inch pulley mounted to the engine. Now I'm having a choice between a two or a two and a half because that's very deep sea um, with a clutch to be used on it. Either this two or that one. I haven't made a choice yet, but if you look at the parts we have here, we have an idler, tensioner, a tensioner. We have cooling fans for the box. We have a permanent magnet alternator that's very low RPM, and these do not cog. Look, I don't even have a nut or nothing on it. They don't cog. You hear about these PMAs cogging all the time? Not from Thermodyne. Um, I don't know who the hell else makes them that, that don't cog. I know that that one don't. There's brands out there that don't cog, but they also don't produce any power. This thing here is capable of, of, of 100 amps, literally 100 amps being charged in your battery bank. So if you have a big one like you see in the beginning of the picture, you'll understand. So we have the fan, we have the pulley. I'll make a choice between this one or this one and figure out what I'm working with. I have a 100 amp 
a 150 amp, 150 amp meter that'll be going in right here, mounted in the box, so that when the box closes, we can see. And if you see what that is, that's just a little old toolbox. Kind of neat, huh? Just a little Excel there. Um, we have everything we need. Thermodyne sends you really good paperwork on it, so I've got that. They give you all the stuff. It tells you about your PMA, and they tell you that the uh, uh, the maximum is 2,700 RPM. So make sure you gauge your pulleys or your fan blades or your wind turbine blades correctly, so that you don't overspeed. Um, kind of hard to do. These are just almost indestructible. So you've got all that. Now, the timer board will be so that if I come out here and I see that I'm at 11.5 volts, and I know from experience that this engine will bring the system back up in a matter of 45 minutes, well, I can use this. It'll also be inside the box here uh, as part of the components. So what we're going to be building is a gasoline-powered DC 100 amp generator that is a 100 amp rectifier battery charging system so it's going to be producing 100 amps and this ain't like engine start one when you're big battery chargers that is actually not what you're getting with that that's not a 200 amp charger believe me it's actually just jacks the voltage up super high forces your battery to become the 200 amp hit we don't want to do that we want pure clean power that's why we're going here so you're going to be seeing this being built with all these parts, the Thermodyne PMA, the Harbor Freight 3 horsepower motor, the hour meter, all the different pulleys, and you can see the holy cow is that ever one hell of a stator. That's what's inside these. And you're going to be able to see this completely built in the next few videos. I'm going to try to get it done in one more video, including a frame. Uh, enclosure and we're gonna have it up and running with the control brain which is this right here and it's in this package okay and the control brain when we reach 14.7 volts being pushed into my battery bank because I run a 12 volt system when we reach that then this generator with a relay the relay will ground out the power on the generator, ground out the spark plug, and kill the motor. And that's what that thing does. Just like a diversion controller where it kicks on to burn off excess power, instead it's going to run a relay that's going to interrupt the power to the engine. So stay tuned, subscribe, whatever parts I use out here, I'm going to put down the bottom of my video where the upload date's at. And this is actually probably cheaper to buy than one of those $500 maintaining all you know, charging systems that they sell. So do it yourself. It's not that hard. And be looking for the completion of the Harbor Freight crazy trailer, double axle.